So in this video, I want to go through some examples of uh, using the inverse norm function on your calculator to reverse engineer. So you're given the probability and you need to find uh, the x value that corresponds to it. So let's say we start with a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 0.5. And I want to find a, b and c uh, in each of these cases. So in the first one, we've got the probability of x being less than a is 0.8. So what that means is that the probability of x being less than some value will be 80% of the data. So really what you want to do for each of these problems is to draw a little diagram, a normal distribution, so you can see precisely what's going on. We've got a mean of 10, okay? Now, if 80% is to be less than a particular value, then if that's 50%, then 80% would have to be all of this. So that's your 80%. And that's got to be less than this value A that we're looking for. So the A value that we have there uh, has got to be greater than 10. OK, we can see by the diagram. So that will be an identifier to make sure that we've done this correctly. So what we want to use is the inverse norm part of your calculator. So the inverse norm of 0.8, because your calculator, when it does this, it's looking for the area to the left of a certain value. OK, so it only works to the left. So we go to menu. And then we go to number seven for distribution. And then you want inverse normal. So number three. And the area is going to be 0.8. We could also type in the sigma, the standard deviation, 0.5. And the mean is 10. And we get 10.42 to two decimal places. OK. Now, uh, I'm going straight on my calculator to do that. Now, you can um, work with the standard normal distribution and use the formula as well. If you were to do that, then what you would be looking at is, first of all, you'd have to find the z value that corresponds to a. So z is equal to, and the a value is this one, take away 10 uh, divided by the standard deviation, which is 0.5. Now, the inverse norm um, that we need is the z value. And so it's not that 10.42. It is the standard normal. So when you go into inverse norm, your error is still 0.8. But your sigma is 1, and your mean is 0. And that gives you 0.8416 to four decimal places. So this gives you an equation to solve to find A. So if we do uh, 0.8416 times by 0.5, then add the 10, we get to the 10.42 that we've got there. OK? So that's where the formula would be coming in here. So for the rest of these examples, I'm not going to be using the formula. I'll do them straight on the calculator so you can see how that works. OK? Right, so for number two, we've got that the probability of x being greater than b is 0.47. So let's see what that looks like. So on my normal distribution curve, there's 10. And we're saying that the probability of being greater than b is 0.47, or 47%. So if that's 50%, then there, that could be the 47%. we know 47% is greater than that value B. Now, remember, your calculator can only work out, uh, work with errors to the left, OK? So we can't type in uh, the inverse norm of 0.47. That won't give us the correct value. So what we need to do is think, well, it's equivalent to say that if 47% are higher than B, then 53% are less than B. So instead, we can look up the inverse norm of 53%. 
Okay, so on our calculator, we go to the inverse norm function, and the area is 0.53. Standard deviation was 0.5, and the mean was 10. And that gives us 10.04 to two decimal places. Okay, it's 10.0376 Okay, so just a little bit along from the mean, as our diagram can show. Okay, so now let's have a go at this third one, okay? So what we're saying here is that the probability of x uh, being between these two values, 10 take away c and 10 plus c, is 20%, okay? So as you can see, because we've got 10 take away c and 10 plus c, that's symmetric about the mean. So if that's my 10, that wasn't really good, was it? There we are. Okay. If that's my 10, then I've got 10 take away C and 10 plus C. And this region here represents 20%. Okay. Now, remember, we want to look up um, an area to the left. We can't just type in 0.2 because the error always has to go from the point you're looking at all the way down to negative infinity. So what we need to think about is, well, if that's 20%, then these two parts must add up to 80% for the whole thing to be 100. So if they are 80%, and this is symmetric, one of these is 40%. So this position here is precisely... Well, 20% plus the 40%, so 60% along. So I can inverse norm 60%, 0.6, and that will give me the position of 10 plus C. So 0.6, and we get 10.12667, etc. So 10 plus C must be the 10.12667. And so C must be 0.1267 to four decimal places. OK? And that is how we can find the A, B, and the C in these three problems.